Hi y'all, welcome to Williams Weather. In this video, I'll be looking at your 6 to 10 day temperature and precipitation outlook as well as the upcoming weather pattern. Is there any severe weather to be concerned about next week? As well as any major winter storms? Especially after Buffalo just received over 6 feet of snow. We're breaking that all down coming up in this video. Starting off looking at the radar here. Looks like there's already winter storm warnings and advisories issued with a blizzard warning issued for western Texas. Blizzard warning for 5 to 10 inches of snow with winds gusting over 50 to 60 mile an hour for Guadalupe and Delaware Mountains in Texas until noon central time and 11 mountain time on Saturday. So if you have to get out Please be careful. And there's also a winter storm warning in New Mexico for about 4 to 9 inches of snow above 7,500 feet in the mountains. Winds gusting as high as 35 mile an hour for eastern Lincoln, south central mountains, and southwest Chavez County until 5 in the morning mountain time on Saturday. So looks like some winter weather is going to be setting in for tonight and to tomorrow over there in western Texas and New Mexico. Also some winter weather advisories for the northeast part of the country as well as the northwest parts of Montana. And with the winter storm watch in Washington, which was from Saturday evening through Monday morning for 10 to 20 inches of snow with winds over 45 mile an hour. Looks like we have some winter weather in store for most of the country. And we'll take a look at the simulated divide here in a little bit to see if there's any more winter weather in store. Take a look at the drought monitor real quick. It looks like much of the country is under a drought. Looks like uh, the Midwest and the Ohio Valley is under the moderate drought to abnormally dry. The Plains looks like you are an exceptional drought. Definitely drought out west to extreme drought. Let's go take a look at the 6 to 10 day precipitation and temperature outlook to see whether we'll get a relief from the drought or we'll stay in this drought pattern. Looks like the eastern part of the country in the red here, y'all gonna be above average to hit as you head into December. In the blue here, y'all gonna be way below average, especially in this dark blue here from, from Washington all the way down into South Dakota. Now, the 8 to 14 day outlook just about the same really down southern texas y'all gonna be above average that's really the only difference now as precip goes from kansas all the way down to arizona y'all ain't gonna get a relief from this drought but as far as the rest of the country goes looks like y'all have been getting a relief from the drought conditions as y'all gonna be above average Your 8 to 14 day outlook looks like much of the country's gonna be above average as far as precip goes except for in northwest washington and in Florida. Let's look at the winter storm severity index for the next three days. Looks like uh, we already know about southeast New Mexico into western Texas. There's already blizzard warnings and winter storm warnings and advisories issued. Down on the northwest part of the country there's minor impacts from winter storms and in the gray there's also limited impacts as you can see down here. Let's look at the excessive rainfall outlook for the next three days. Looks like in southeast Texas, y'all gonna be in that moderate 20 to 50 percent chance for excessive rainfall, and the slight risk y'all are in the 10 to 20 percent, and the green y'all are in the five to 10 percent marginal risk. Your day two outlook, like there's a marginal risk from Texas all the way down into southwest Alabama into the western Panhandle of Florida. Now your day three outlook, there's not much. Now let's take this out in 120 hours into the future. Rain totals go. It's like about one to two inches of additional rainfall could happen. That's why the moderate risk has been issued. So don't drive through the flooded roadways. Turn around, don't drown. Look at the storm prediction center's outlook as there is a day five 30 percent chance for severe weather. That's pretty rare by the Storm Prediction Center to issue these, so please be weather aware that day. I will have updates on the Williams Weather Facebook page. Whatever risk is issued, I will be on there. I will share it. And there's a 15% chance around that as well. Now, 30% chances in western Mississippi, northern Louisiana, and southern Arkansas, as you can see here. So, again, please be weather aware that day. Nowhere to go when severe weather strikes. As far as today goes, looks like there is a marginal risk for southeastern Texas for tornadoes and damaging winds. 2% chance. And there's just general thunderstorm risk in the light green here. Day 2 outlook. 2% chance for tornadoes and a 5% chance for damaging winds. It looks like uh, tornadoes and damaging winds are in store for the next couple days, along with flooding for the deep south and eastern Texas, all the way into Alabama. And for your day 5, I'm to keep an eye on. Go take a look at the, look at the simulated jet stream. So you put this in the motion here as we take this to about 1 o'clock on Black Friday. As you see, there is this bowling ball trough. It looks like that will push towards the northeast by Sunday at 8 o'clock. Looks like it will be impacting the Ohio Valley area. Looks like we'll be in some sort of zonal flow pattern for a little while until a trough comes down by Tuesday, 10 o'clock in the morning or so. Now this is what could be responsible for bringing severe weather for the Arkansas, Louisiana, and western Mississippi area. It looks like another trough could be setting up by the beginning of December. Now let's take a look at 
the simulated radar. I'm going to push it for about 1 o'clock. And that winter storm going on in western Texas and southeastern New Mexico with some rain in central Texas. And the severe weather really won't get ramped up till later tonight into Saturday morning as it pushes east into Louisiana and Mississippi, which the worst of that will happen in the early afternoon hours of Saturday. Now it'll be out of the marginal risk area by Sunday morning. With its upper level low, pushing northeastward into the Ohio Valley, and getting a potential winter storm to Wisconsin, Iowa, and northern Missouri, dumping some rainfall in Indiana, potentially into Michigan. Normal pushes forward into Tuesday. It looks like uh, by 8 o'clock in the morning we have some snow showers over here in Nebraska, South Dakota, Minnesota, and in the mountain states. On the severe side of things, looks like we already have some rain showers setting up possibly some supercells. Now this won't start becoming a problem until later in the day as this is our first round of storms. This will be a late evening into overnight event as a QLCS storm system will move through overnight bringing high gusty winds and possibly some tornadoes. Now what a QLCS is is basically a disorganized squall line that moves through that causes tornadoes, gusty winds, and some hail. Well, again please be with our weather that day. We don't know the main risk just yet but I'm thinking there'll be some tornadoes and gusty winds and some small hail with it. Looks like we have some snow out in the west. Rain to kick off uh, December in the Ohio Valley. Also got the uh, lightning flash density rate. This is what determines who could see the strongest storms at what time. Looks like by Saturday night down here in southeastern Texas. Looks like y'all gonna be getting the worst of it. One o'clock on Saturday to about eight o'clock on Saturday. Looks like Louisiana and Mississippi are gonna be getting the worst of it. We'll push this off into Tuesday. Into Wednesday you see south southeastern Arkansas into northwest Mississippi and northern Louisiana. Looks like that would be the worst of it really overnight too there'll be a first round that comes through then it'll clear up and then the last round will come through and that's when you'll be getting your strongest of the storms now let's look, take a look at the dew points as this plays a key factor in severe weather development too we'll have that major winter storm out in the mountain states colliding with that warm moist air as you see our dew points in the 60s that's sufficient for severe weather and cape in in the 2000s you see this will move out by wednesday morning it's gonna be a pretty quick mover we'll have a squall line moving through and i'll show you most unstable cape it's gonna be about 2,000 joules per kilogram and about 2,300 joules per kilogram. That's pretty uh, substantial cape. Effective available potential energy is the energy that fuels severe weather. I'll show you some temperatures here. Those temperatures will be pretty warm. It'll be a pretty moist, unstable environment that day. You see temperatures in the 70s before it cools back down in the 30s by 8 o'clock in the morning on December 1st. Looks like it'll be a warm up and a cool off for a lot of y'all. I'm going to pull up a sounding as well here. Here for the severe weather threat happening on Tuesday. So there's a track soundings all up and down the 30% hatch area. There's lots of cape with this, about 2300 joules per kilogram. Now look at the hodograph here. Winds are blowing out of the southwest towards the northeast. And we're rotating here. This is a curved hodograph. Kind of a weak elevated mix layer. What the elevated mix layer is, is basically, uh, you know, when you see clear out there, when there's a severe weather threat issue, let's say a moderate risk is issued, and you think, oh, well, there's not going to be severe weather today. It's all clear out. You never want to see it being clear out on a severe weather day because that means there's going to be heating in the day and dew points are going to be rising that's going to create moisture and instability it's going to provide enough energy and unstable unstable atmosphere and that's going to bring the severe weather really you don't want a clear sunny day when there's a severe weather risk i'm thinking probably be a 10 percent chance for tornadoes now let's look at the climate forecast model as a Side note, anything over 10 days is usually not very accurate, but we're going to go all the way to Christmas here. This takes us all the way up to the Christmas forecast. We have some rain showers in the Ohio Valley. Snowstorm out in the northwest. We're going to be dry for a while until middle of December. Looks like a big snowstorm out west. Now on Christmas Eve morning, looks like there could be a... Now this is 708 hours out. Please note, there could be a major snowstorm happening from Kansas all the way up into Wisconsin here in the blue. Some rain showers in Indiana. No showers over here in, out west on Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve night, about the same really. And there's some snow showers out west. And Santa is going to be coming to town. There'll be some coming into some snow showers out west. Snow showers from Missouri all the way up into Wisconsin. Rain showers eastern part of the country. Now this probably won't happen, but just for kicks and giggles. Now this will change multiple times before then as it is 700 hours out. Let's look at the snowfall totals here using the Canadian model. All right now we're getting about 5 to 10 inches of snow down here by Texas and New Mexico. Possibly 11 inches over there. Some places could be getting more, more or less. Please be careful when you, if you have to go out. Over here in Idaho, Montana area, y'all be getting about 3 to 6. Over here in the northeast states, y'all going to be getting about a dusting, 10 inch. 
here by Maine, y'all be getting about two inches of snow by uh, the 26th. That's tomorrow by 8 o'clock. Moves forward about 8 o'clock on uh, Sunday. About the same, really. Idaho's getting about 36 still. Looks like the central part of the United States by Wednesday. And there'll be a big snow event here and a big severe weather event here. About Wednesday, 8 o'clock in the morning, about 3 inches. About 2 to 4 is when we're going to give it. Up here in the mountains, you'll be getting about a foot of snow or so. Maybe give the ski slopes. Looks like out west, wow, by Oregon, 35 inches of snow. Now this is 132 hours out, so long way to go. And push us further out into the future. Looks like by December 5th, 8 o'clock, or December 4th, because the 00Z is in the next run. But it's like about 7 inches for Maine, 15 inches up in the ski slopes. Looks like northern Indiana, about 2 inches. Well, that's the Canadian model. Let's look at another model here all right the euro is saying for the blizzard and winter storm that's happening down here in texas it's about the same really about three to six to five to ten possibly more in some areas like less snow over here in idaho about three to six really about the same and then in the northeast states about two inches or so looks like the euro pushed the snowstorm further north than the canadian did about three to six is what it's saying that's when it starts blending models here this will take us out to december 4th this is the conservative model this is the one that blends everything together yeah about 36 in some places five to ten in others same for idaho 36 for y'all by tuesday still saying something about that winter storm it's gonna be Impact in the central part of the United States here about two to four Looks like northeast states can be getting on some snow too It's like 53 inches of snowfall by uh, fourth at eight o'clock in the west Looks like lots of snow is in store for the western part of the United States. High Valley still not getting much snow I'm dusting to an inch to sum it up basically uh, just please be weather aware Tuesday as there could be a severe weather outbreak There's gonna be a major winter storm down in western Texas into southeastern New Mexico That could dump five to ten inches of snow. Blizzard warnings already issued some major snowstorms out west and then the northeast we could see some uh, relief from the drought in the Ohio Valley as there will be some rain showers begin December. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Never stop forecasting.